stop by when you've got a few minutes to pull over and have a moment, if you will, of distraction from the news cycle that is happening today. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Louisiana Now podcast. I am your host, Todd Rossnagel. It is great to have you along with us. This episode is debuting Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. And as you know, today is Election Day, the day where Americans will head to the polls and cast their ballot for President of the United States of America. In the words of John Lewis, the civil rights pioneer who passed away earlier this year, the vote is precious, he says. It's almost sacred. It's the most powerful nonviolent tool we have in a democratic society, and we must use it. And millions of Americans have already used it, as early voting numbers are simply historic as we head into Election Day. To give you an idea, more than 70 million Americans have cast ballots in the United States presidential election. That's more than half the total turnout of the 2016 election. It might just result in the highest voter turnout percentage-wise in more than a century. Here in Louisiana, early voting has also been off the chart. But there are still millions who will vote today on the traditional day to vote, the last day to vote. Now, I do not have to tell you just how contentious this election has been. The president of the United States, Donald Trump, versus former vice president, Joe Biden. The total cost for the 2020 election, nearly $14 billion. Unprecedented. The political divide, it too feels unprecedented. So, where is the church in an election season? Where is the church on election day? Our guest today... Reverend Lane Cotton Wynn, Senior Pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge. St. John's is a polling location for three precincts in Baton Rouge, and this is their first presidential election. We caught up with Lane as the church has been busy preparing for all that today might offer. Flipping a spot reserved for worship to a spot reserved for secret ballots. But St. John has done more than just flip a worship space, they have created several prayer stations. Located on the opposite end of the campus, these stations will be offered as a way for voters, if they so choose to, have a spiritual moment of reflection, a moment of rest, and maybe even deep contemplation, a chance to see God in the midst of it all. We began our conversation with Lane setting the stage for what she is expecting today on the campus of St. John's. For the last month or so, we've been worshiping in our Family Life Center as we resumed in-person worship since COVID. And on Sunday after worship, we asked a few volunteers to stick around after church to help us pick up chairs. Because today, for Election Day, we're now a polling location for three precincts in South Baton Rouge. So today we're expecting a a number of our neighbors to be on campus today as they come to cast their ballots. Uh, We've been serving as a a polling site for about a year and a half now, but we've only hosted statewide or local elections. So today is our first uh, taste of a national election. And already there's a lot of... um, um, buzz in the air, a lot of anxiety from folks, but people are glad to be here too. Well, Lane, there is indeed a lot of anxiety um, for a number of different reasons, but I suspect that you find value in uh, being a part of this electoral process, uh, specifically uh, the church being a part of this process in, in a way that you're even part of the process, right? I mean, because there's, there's different lines that, uh, that you can't cross and whatnot, but, but just having the church connected to this, um, your thoughts on that? 
Absolutely. I think it's a great honor that we get to host this election for the neighbors in our community who are coming today. It, it enables us to be a place of welcome and hospitality, not just for those that worship with us, but for the church to truly be a center of gathering for the community. Um, so I'm thankful that we were um, asked to serve as a polling site and that folks have been able to find us and be here with us. It's a great chance for us to um, offer the gift of hospitality to our community and also to um, remind people that we're here for them, not just on election day, but anytime. A lot of churches go through at least the, uh, the thinking process of I don't know, how do we get people in and out of here uh, on a Sunday, um, getting people in and out of uh, the, the worship space, or the, the life center, if you will, at St. John's on election day has to be challenging. Uh, I'm assuming you're happy that you're not having to deal with those logistics, right? <laughs> you're right about that. I'm thankful that we've got some really able uh, poll workers who are helping usher the flow of traffic in and out. Um, they asked us that we have two separate doorways for use, you know, an entrance and an exit, which we were able to do, thankfully. And, um, and there's a great, they've increased their staff for today as well, which is so mm. smart of them to be thinking about that ahead of time. Um, and so we've got more poll workers than we have in the past, but I think that we're going to find that they were needed. They can help tell people which line to be in and um, how to continue to socially distance so that we can all stay safe during the season. And then we also recruited some volunteers from the church to also help, but just to offer hospitality, direct people um, if they're wondering where to go, and then also to offer a cup of cold water if they need something, um, if they're standing in line for a long time. We're going to be able to offer them some water. We even collected some um, extra Halloween candy from those who are trying to get it out of their house. And uh, we're able to Do you need some more. Do you need some more? I have plenty. <laughs> yeah, bring it on. <laughs> so we're offering it with uh, gloved hands and tongs so people can pick and choose the candy, but get it safely into their hands and then into their bellies, of course. Wow, I didn't even realize that with social distancing now that you that you reference how you're going to be handing out candy and such. Um, are, are, how are the social distancing guidelines? I'm assuming masks um, are going to be required or, or maybe not when when the voting uh, happens at St. John's. Well, uh, my understanding from the poll workers is that uh, they cannot require someone to wear a mask uh, in order to get in and vote because they can't prohibit somebody from exercising their right to vote. Um, but everyone is is really taking the protocols seriously. And so I've been pleased to see that there's been um, a good uh, good practicing of those things that we've all grown accustomed to over the last few months as we've been living through this pandemic together. They also delivered um, some hands-free um, hand sanitizer and they've got cones to kind of mark off the six feet apart for the line inside. Outside, we're not quite as worried about that. Um, but I'm, I'm really thankful that it seems the state has tried to think through all the scenarios and, and provide the right resources at the centers. Lane, you mentioned the church being at the intersection of this uh, historic day, um, but you have also, you and the staff at St. John's also understand uh, that people may need, uh, may need to process everything uh, that is happening. Uh, whether you're voting at St. John's or maybe you're even in the neighborhood, you are offering up uh, prayer stations. Uh, tell the folks at home, how the stations will work and what the stations are specifically offering. Sure. We, we are blessed with such a beautiful piece of land here at the corner of Highland Road and Renee Drive. And there's some beautiful oak trees that are in the front of our property, uh, the opposite side of our campus from the Family Life Center. So on the front of our roadway, we've um, set up a, a, a circular route among our trees. So under the arbor of the oaks, you can walk through and, and pause for a time of prayer and reflection at eight different prayer stations that offer a, a word of scripture, a, a short reflection, and then a prayer for you. And they're themed for the day really specifically to offer a moment for you to breathe, to release the outcome if possible, to 
offer a prayer for God to reign and, and for the unity of the body of Christ to, to be evident across this land. And so there's a, a great sense of encouragement, I find, and hope in these prayer stations. And we're welcoming our congregation to come by, but really anyone in the community is welcome to stop by when you've got a few minutes to pull over and have a moment, if you will, of distraction from the news cycle that is happening today. Uh, I heard over and over again in the last few weeks how anxious my own congregation is. So I know that that's indicative of all of us this day. And so we offer this as a place of uh, reflection and prayer and, and peace on this very historic day. This content that you have for the prayer stations is uh, is well thought out. There's, there's a lot of thought went into these uh, prayer stations, uh, including, you were telling me this before we started recording, uh, including one station that has what you referred to as a prickly prayer. Um, <laughs> what is the prickly prayer that you'll be guiding folks through? <laughs> sure. Well, um, on that prayer station, we're first invited to read Jesus's words from Matthew chapter five in those verses 43 to 48. When, when he says, I say to you, love your enemy and pray for those who harass you. And it is a way of showing love to everyone, not just the people that you love or your neighbor. Uh, and so it, then in the the reflection time, we are reminded that surely there have been people who have pricked our nerves over the last few days or weeks. <laughs> and in particular, maybe there's a candidate or party, even an opinionated friend or family member who uh, you don't think of well right now. So it's a it's an invitation to take a minute to name that person um, who's been a thorn in your side. And, and as you do to tightly clench your fist around that name and then acknowledge that pain and that struggle, but then release it, lifting that name to God as you unclench your fist. And there's a, then a prayer that guides us into giving thanks that we're all created in God's image, not just me and you, Todd, but even those prickly prayer pair, <laughs> pair type folks. And, um, and then to confess that sometimes it's difficult to recognize Jesus in those prickly personalities. So asking God to remove those blind spots that we have and, and help us to love each other better, even when it's hard. Some of the other prayer stations draw upon our, our Wesleyan tradition as well with um, that writing from John Wesley from October 6th that he wrote in 1774. And he said, I met those of our society who had, who had votes in the ensuing election and advised them, one, to vote without fee or reward for the person they judged most worthy, two, to speak no evil of the person they voted against, and three, to take care their spirits were not sharpened against those that voted on the other side. <laughs> well, that is a great invitation for all of us to think about which one of those is the hardest. And that's the reflection at that station. You know, what of those, um, that, that invitation from Wesley is the, is the scariest one for you to imagine doing. And then to be intentional about living in unity, even with those who vote differently than us followed by a reading from Ephesians, which has, which has great language about conducting ourselves in humility and gentleness and patience, accepting each other in love and remembering that there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of us all who is over all, through all and in all. You know, Lane, hearing all this makes me wish that my voting location was at St. John's. This is uh, <laughs> it sounds like it's um, it's it's going to be a great day. I wanted to ask you um, throughout the election season, uh, and perhaps going forward um, from today and even into the and maybe the days and weeks ahead, we don't know. Uh, we have been bombarded by division. 
how do we speak in the midst of the division uh, and, and, and do so with a spirit of love? Hmm. Well, I, I keep looking back to the example of Jesus in my own life, following his model for how he cared for the most vulnerable people, um, how he invited us to love our neighbor and to pray for our enemy, and that we have a job to do to live out his desires in the world, to bring about justice and peace for everyone, not just the folks that look like us or vote like us or who believe as we believe, but truly for all the world. And so I think that on this day and this season of heightened anxiety and fear and division, we as the body of Christ are called to speak hope, unity, and peace into this time. We are back with more after this. The mission of the United Methodist Foundation of Louisiana is to be a catalyst that strengthens and preserves the current ministries of the conference while meeting the needs of a diverse and rapidly changing society. What does that mean for you and me? Well, within the last decade, the foundation loaned over $23 million to more than 100 United Methodist churches. These loans address the needs for expansion, renovation, or unexpected repairs, primarily so churches can be in a better position to meet the needs of the communities they serve. They've been awarding grants for a quarter of a century now, totaling over $5 million, and to think it all started with a $5,000 check back in 1975 at the first meeting. That check, referenced by the foundation as a mustard seed, took root and has now grown to over $170 million in managed assets, the fourth largest of all United Methodist foundations. And it has helped distribute hundreds of thousands of dollars each year to Christian ministries in Louisiana and throughout the world. Want to read more about that mustard seed? You can. It's one of the many stories featured on their website, umf.org. Welcome back, everyone, to the Louisiana Now podcast. I am your host, Todd Rossnagel. We have been chatting with Reverend Lane Cotton Wynn, the senior pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge. St. John's is a polling location today on Election Day, and the church will be offering prayer stations for those who might be interested in a moment of reflection before they go home. As they leave the station, they'll be handed a prayer to bring home. A prayer for the days and weeks to come. Reverend Lane Cotton Wynn shares that prayer. Holy God, we come to you today in prayer full of emotions. Election seasons always seem to bring that out in us worry and hope, fear and frustration, the list could go on. So today we bow our heads and ask for guidance. Open our ears to hear the groans of creation. Open our eyes to see the needs of others. Open our hearts to make room for empathy. Give us the wisdom to navigate challenging conversations. Give us the patience to disagree with grace. Give us the compassion to make decisions for the greater good. And when all else fails, Bring us back to love. Bring our hearts and our hands, our dreams and our hopes, our anger and our frustration, our hurt and our fear, all back 
to love. With hope we pray. With hope we are sustained. Amen. Reverend Lane Cotton Wynn, Senior Pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church in Baton Rouge. Lane, I know you're going to have a very, very busy, and it sounds like an amazing day. We thank you so much for carving time out of your day to talk to us. It was my pleasure, Todd. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. If you enjoyed it, please consider sharing it with a friend and sharing it on your social media channel today. For our producer, Mary Burley, our sponsor, the United Methodist Foundation of Louisiana, I am your host, Todd Rossnagel. Thanks for joining us, and may the God of peace rule our hearts today and every day, and may we all become that peace today and every day.